This journey begins at the center of our solar system, the Sun. It has a diameter of 1,391,000 kilometers. It emits light. Light travels at 299,792 kilometers per second. You would have to drive around the entire coastline of Australia 170 times for every one time around the surface of the Sun. We now travel at the speed of light for an entire 3 minutes and 13 seconds and we reach Mercury. It is the smallest planet in our solar system, being only one and a half times the size of our Moon. Up next is Venus. It was named after the Roman goddess of love and beauty due to it being the brightest natural object that we can see in the night sky, apart from the Moon. The entire planet is completely covered by a cloud of sulfuric acid. Venus is the closest planet to Earth in distance, in size and gravitational pull. We keep travelling at the speed of light until we are at a total of 8 minutes and 19 seconds from the Sun. We have now reached Earth. We have quite a distance left to travel, and I'm sure you already know about our planet and its ability to sustain intelligent life. So moving swiftly on. We travel a little bit further until we are 12 minutes and 39 seconds from the Sun, and we reach Mars. It is often called the Red Planet because of its reddish colour and the fact that it is indeed a planet. The rovers on Mars have found ancient signs of liquid water once being present on the surface. We have 30 minutes and 36 seconds to travel until we reach our next planet. Over that distance, we will have to traverse our way through the main asteroid belt. The belt contains many different sized bodies, from the largest asteroids averaging 400 kilometers in diameter, all the way down to dust particles. After the massive journey through the asteroid belt, we come across the first gas giant and largest planet of our solar system, Jupiter. It has at least 67 moons in its orbit. There has been a massive storm on Jupiter ever since the planet was first observed in the 17th century. They called it the giant red spot and it could swallow two Earth-sized planets. Up next is Saturn. It is a total distance of 1 hour, 19 minutes and 19 light seconds away from the Sun the second biggest planet in our solar system, most recognisable by the iconic rings around it. The rings are mainly comprised of ice particles with small amounts of rock, debris and dust. Now we're off to the seventh planet from the Sun, Uranus. Uranus is the only planet that's name is derived from Greek mythology instead of Roman mythology. Uranus is a gas giant, but it's sometimes categorised as an ice giant due to its almost featureless texture. The Uranus ring system took a long time to confirm its existence. It wasn't until they were observing a star next to Uranus, they realised the star was fading out briefly when going near the planet due to the light being blocked by the rings. We have to travel a further 1 hour, 30 minutes and 23 seconds at the speed of light until we reach the furthest planet from the Sun, Neptune. This planet is the windiest planet in the whole solar system with winds almost reaching 600 meters per second. The reason for its blue color is due to the absorption of the red light by the methane in the atmosphere. We have traveled a total of four hours, nine minutes and 58 seconds at the speed of light. If we wanted to travel to the nearest star, we would have to be traveling at the speed of light for 4.2 years. Let's travel back to the sun and we'll bring all the planets with us to get a sense of scale. And now just when we are beginning to realise how small Earth is, let me show you how our Sun stands up alongside the largest known star. Look at the Sun, all the way down there. Isn't she cute? 